Now that's my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. <laughs> Good night, Charlie. Good luck with your psychology. Oh, I'm not studying psychology. This book's really something. The biggest seller of the month. I sure wish you'd read it, Mr. Albright. You want me to read it? Why? What's it about? That's why I want you to read it. So you can explain it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a good time tonight? Uh-huh. Well, to coin a hip phrase, it was real George. What a band. How'd you like my getting to play our song? Our song? Every time you hear our song, we have to dance. And of all the songs in the world, why does ours have to be Tiger Rag? Because <laughs> it's like us. It's alive. It'd be a miracle if we stay that way, dancing to Tiger Rag. Oh, don't worry about Margie. It's after three o'clock in the morning, and she's certainly in bed by now. Darling, no arguing tonight. I'm just too tired. Out until all hours in the morning. What kind of a father are you? I refuse to argue tonight. And you kissed her. No, you don't miss a thing. How many times have you kissed her before? You caught the first show. Oh, Dad, I'm only thinking of your health. If kissing were bad for my health, I would have kicked the bucket before I ever got out of grammar school. Oh, Dad, it isn't just the kissing. It's the late hours. That poor old heart is nearly 50 years old. In view of the fact that it's been pumping all that time, the least I can do is prove to it that I'm not dead. You... you want to make an orphan out of me. I'm just not going to argue tonight. Nighty-night. I hope you fall out of bed. Good night, dear. <laughs> I heard the elevator door. I've got to get out of here. You know, Margie, in spite of the fact that your father dislikes me so much, I don't dislike him. I kind of feel sorry for the old fella. Who knows? Maybe I'll be the same way when I'm looking back on my faded youth. Well, you can start fading right now and don't bother looking back. <laughs> good, good night, Margie. Uh, Goodbye. I mean, good night, Mr. Albright. What's the idea of having that drooling group around here until 3 o'clock in the morning? Please, dear. No arguing tonight. I'm too tired. Margie. Now, you I'm listen. I'm 21, and I can do as I please. Margie. Listen, darling. Don't you understand? I just want to take care of you. 
please. It's, it's just that I don't think Freddy's good enough for you. Well, I'm old enough to choose my own companions. Well, but listen, darling, when, when the right boy comes along, I'll know. Swell. And I hope the two of you will be very happy together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darling, don't fight me. Remember, this, this poor old heart is almost 50. Good night, darling. I'm just not going to argue tonight. Nighty night. Oh, Margie. Yes? Whose turn is it? My turn. Well, go ahead. Okay. I apologize. Let's make up. <laughs> I accept and agree. You know, honey, sometimes I wish you were six years old again. You do? Yes, things were a lot different when you were that age. Yes, I had a lot more control over you then. <laughs> I'm serious. You used to listen to me. Take my advice. Well, I was reasonably sure you were smarter than I when I was six. Ah, you've always been the most wonderful father in the whole world. That's why I worry about you the way I do. Well, that's why I worry about you. Now, take Freddy. Well, let's take Roberta. Well, listen, Margie, Roberta is really very nice. Well, I say Freddy's the nicest fellow I've... <laughs> <laughs> Go to bed. Good night. <laughs> Every week when I come in here to clean, it's the same story. Why don't you try some of that psychology stuff on your father? What do you know about psychology? I used to clean for Professor Winslow. <sighs> Who's Professor Winslow? Who is he? I thought just about everybody had heard about his new book on reverse psychology. Oh, that one. Yes, I've seen it advertised quite a lot lately. The best little fixer-upper in the world. Somebody don't like green. You argue with them and they'll die not liking green. But you agree with them, the green's no good, and keep on agreeing with them. First thing you know, you've got a fight on your hands. They now love green. Would it work for purple? It'd work with your Freddy. You mean, agree with my father about Freddy? Exactly. But that's just what he wants me to do. Of course, of course, but only because you've never done it before. What happens after you agree with him? All of a sudden, the kick's gone. There's nothing for him to fight. So what does he do? Joins the other team, battles on again. Oh, he's on your team, but he don't know it. Kind of cute, huh? But maybe you're right. Maybe it's not such a good idea. Well, it's a perfectly wonderful idea. I'll get a copy today. Well, I never had it work that fast for me before. Personally, I say in your case, it would stand a good chance of working if properly applied. Well, you've given me a big sales talk, Mr. Honeywell. And your boss never makes a mistake. You'll agree with that. Oh, I'll agree with that even though I won't agree with it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Quite so. Shows good understanding between us. You know, a good relationship. Imagine my saying that I like Freddy. Uh, the only trouble with that book is it's so popular right now. I'm not sure it'd work on someone who's read it. You'd better act quickly before your daughter gets a hold of it. Oh, don't worry about that. Unless there's a picture of two people kissing on the cover, Margie won't even open it. Well, it's not going to be easy, my saying that I like Freddy. But if it's the only way that I can get Margie to say she dislikes him... Uh, Mr. Honeywell? Yes? Mr. Honeywell, I like Freddy. Yes, sir. Fine boy, that Freddy. Very convincing, Albright. Very convincing. Oh, yes, darling. You're home early. <sighs> I've got your martini waiting. Dad, what's with the arm? And your shoulder, it's all hunched up. Well, <laughs> this is uh, hard to believe, but I, uh, I ran into a new client today, a lady wrestler, and I, I had to uh, straight out my way out. <laughs> Knowing you, I almost do <laughs> believe it. Seriously, Dad, at your age, you could have arthritis or bursitis A little or... cocktailitis is what I'm interested in. Okay? Okay, coming right up. Here you are. <laughs> See, Limmer is a two-year-old, not a kink in it. 
One whiff of this magic liniment did the trick. Crazy. I'll put dinner on the table. Wait. Hmm? Sit down. I, I want to talk to you. Oh? What about? Well, it's, uh... It's about Freddy. Freddy? But that's... Just... I mean, what about him? Well, I've been doing a lot of serious reading. Oh, I mean, uh, I mean, thinking about him today. Me too. And I've decided that... Just a minute. What I want to say is that I think that uh, maybe I've been a, a little unkind to Freddy. Oh, Dad. You're just sorry because you think you've hurt me. Oh, it's, it's not that at all. I really think I've been very unfair. Oh, please, stop feeling sorry for me. The truth of the matter is, I've defended him too much. It's beginning to work already. She's starting to agree with me. Well, why shouldn't you defend him when you know what a fine fellow he really is? He actually said Freddy's a nice fellow, and I barely started working on him. It's the way you defended him that's made me see the light. Dad, stick to your own convictions. I know you wouldn't have said the things you said if they weren't true. I think you summed him up best when you said he's a cross between a drip and a droop. Oh, I was wrong, Margie. He's not a drip or a droop. He's the drippiest droop I ever saw. What a jelly-livered excuse for a human male. Why, if he'd had any backbone, he'd have punched you in the nose long ago for some of the things you've said to him. Papa, dear, don't bother to make that particular point to Freddy. You know, I think I'll call him up right now and tell him not to come around anymore. Oh, don't do that. Uh, call him up and tell him to come over tonight. Well, if you say so, I will. <laughs> I'd like to tell him I'm through in person. Oh, but won't you, uh, won't you reconsider? Dad, my mind's made up. Well, I guess I've done all I can. I seldom ever win an argument with you. Freddy, poor kid. It was so simple, it's almost unbelievable. I never would have believed she'd fall for it so completely. Hook, line, and sinker. Well, come in, Freddy. Come right in. Come right in. I'm awfully sorry about last night. You are? I behaved like a perfect idiot. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Uh, Roberta's coming over and we're going to have a party. I'll sit right down, Freddy, and I'll fix you a drink. Oh, hi, Margie. Take your hands off me. in my life your father decides to like me and now you hate me. Freddie, let me tell you the amazing story of reverse psychology. Huh? Now that we're alone, why don't you... Shh. What's going on here tonight? Darling, it's all because of the most amazing book that was ever published. Reverse psychology. Oh, you mean the book the boy in the elevator was reading? That's the one. And thanks to Professor D.J. Winslow, Margie is through with Freddy. Oh, you're kidding. I'm happy to say I'm very serious. That's the reason I was so nice to Freddy tonight. I can't help feeling sorry for somebody that's about to get a kick in the teeth. Mighty fine dogs, Mr. Honeywell. Thanks, all right. I think I'll grab off a few more blue ribbons this year. Say, why don't you come on up to New Haven with me? You just might enjoy that show. Couldn't possibly. I'm taking Miss Townsend to the theater tonight. Not many bosses that take no for an answer. <laughs> Good understanding between us, all right. Good relationship. Hmm? <laughs> ah, Miss Townsend, I was just leaving. Come in, come in. Thank you, Mr. Honeywell. Nice of you to drop in, dear. All set for tonight? 
That's what I came over to talk to you about. I can't make it. Huh? I have to go out of town. Out of town? After I've gone and... Well, Mr. Matichek's daughter is getting married, and I... I don't care if Mr. Matichek is getting married. Oh, please let me finish. I have to take her wedding gown up to her because it won't be ready until tonight. You're supposed to be the buyer for the store, not the delivery boy. Well, Mr. Matichek wants me to sort of see that things go all right. And darling, you know that when one's boss asks one to do him a special favor, one does it. All right, if that's all I mean to you, go ahead. Stop acting like a child. Stop acting like a child. Every time I get sore, you say I'm acting like a child. Well, this time I'll show you that I'm not acting at all. I'm darn serious. If you go out of town tonight, that's the last you'll see of me. Goodbye, Vern. Goodbye. Goodbye. You don't have to pretend. I know you haven't left the room. You sound awfully happy tonight. Why shouldn't I be? My father had an argument with Roberta. He says he doesn't think he'll ever see her again. Mm-hmm. What's so interesting? This reverse psychology stuff. Well, how'd you happen to find it? I thought I had it hidden better than that. <laughs> well, it was a bit painful, but it paid off. It got me in the hip here, but I came up with two dimes, a nickel, and an old lifesaver. You found it there, in that chair? Yeah. But I had it hidden over here. Oh, what a stoop I've been. Now I understand about last night. And tonight, too. What do you mean, and tonight, too? That business he gave me about breaking up with Roberta. How do you like that? Pulling reverse psychology on me. Just wait till he gets back. Gets back? Where is he? I'm not sure now. He said he was going up to New Haven to a dog show with Mr. Honeywell. But he's probably out with Roberta. Come on, let's go. Is he going to hear from me? Looks like she's going somewhere. Maybe they did have a fight. No, I'll carry this, Charlie. No wrinkles for this bride. I have to catch the A-10 to Greenwich. Your cab's waiting downstairs, Miss Town. Greenwich! Did you hear that, Freddy? That's where people go to get married. Sure, they get married and die and everything up there. Oh, look, Margie, I know what you're thinking, but if they'd had a fight, I hardly think they'd be getting married. But they didn't have a fight, don't you understand? It's just some more of that horrible reverse psychology. Oh, no. I know that look. Whatever it is, you can count me out. I refuse to go along with any of your wild schemes. Freddy, honey. No. Freddy. No. I'm going up in the baggage car to see how my dogs are getting along. I'll meet you in the compartment later. Fine. Oh, sorry, my fault. Roberta! Darling, you came down to apologize. Well, actually, I came down to, uh... Well, like you said, to apologize. I'm so glad to see you. Margie, be reasonable, will you? Your father's with Mr. Honeywell, probably on some other train miles away. This is silly, running up and down like this, looking in window... Uh-oh. Let's get out of here. No! but I'm going to do something. Uh-oh. That look again. Well, the train couldn't be doing over 80. I think I'll play safe and jump off. But, Freddy, honey... Every time you want something, you say, Freddy, honey. 
Freddy. Then you say, Freddy. Then you do that, and I always do this. Oh, Porter, bring a couple of martinis to Department 18. Yes, sir. Let me guess. You're going to Greenwich. That's right. But it all happened so fast, we didn't have time to get tickets. I sell more tickets to Greenwich this way. Roberta, Roberta. What's the matter? You've got to help me. We've got to stop them. Stop who? Hurry, they're eloping. Who's eloping? Both of them in the next car. I don't know what to do. I'm all mixed up. You're mixed up. You should be on this end of the conversation. Now, now, sit down and tell me all about it. Who's eloping in the next car? Margie and Freddie. Margie and Freddie? Well, three cheers for reverse psychology. What? Good for them. So that's the kind of help I came all the way back here to get. Well, thank you very much. I'll handle this myself. Reconsider. What is it, miss? What's wrong? I've been robbed. Robbed? My necklace. That man must have stolen it. What man? What did he look like? He went that way. He had on a... There he is. All right, mister. Hand over the jewel. What are you talking about? You sure this is a thief? I never forget a thief. What kind of a joke is this? She's my daughter. Marge, have you lost your mind? My name is Mary. Mary Jones. Take him away. Now, wait a minute. Would you mind searching me, please? Okay. You see? I don't have any jewels. Oh, there's somebody that knows me. Tell him who I am. Who, me? Yes, go ahead and tell him. Oh, I never saw you before in my life. So you're in on it, too, eh? Well, there's somebody on this train who'll identify me. Hey, come back here. Catch him! Hey, don't let him get away! reverse psychology say so you know what. I... I... You know what? Well, everybody's happy again. Roberta and you, Mr. Honeywell and his dog, and Freddy and me. Freddy! Where's Freddy? Will you please believe me, officer? I don't know how they got in my pocket. 